The 13th Duke of Wyndham here at the National TV Soap Awards with my reputation, a bottle of Viagra, and a super injunction. What were they thinking of? I can do whatever I like. <laughs> You know, I think if we're quick, Katie, we should just get these finished before we lose the light. We've been very, very lucky with the weather today. I'm so glad that the rain has held off. Yes, and the forecast was pretty gloomy. Yes, well, mind you, you know, some heavy, dark, lowering clouds can add drama to a composition. Uh, yes. There's always a danger in these rural paintings of it looking a little bit uh, chocolate boxy. Well, I um, think you need some chiaroscuro in, 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 in a painting, uh, Katie. I mean, to bring out the lighter patches, I need to offset them with something darker. Yes, you know, I think I should get out the... Burnt umber. No, no, not brown. It's too muddy. Uh, uh, a, a nice deep purple. No, something more neutral. Uh, I sable. Th what? Sable. A nice sable. No, 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 no. no. Noir. No, that's not the word I'm looking for, Katie. Uh, onyx? It's on the tip of my tongue. Um, 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 sooty. No, no. Um, uh, oily. Uh, inky. Uh, jet. No. Um, um, coal. No, Katie. Uh, African American. No, Katie, you're confusing me. I know exactly the colour I want. And it is... What's that? I thought a little music, Johnny. Oh, well, um, if you think so, Katie, I mean somewhat changed the mood, but uh, I do like a nice tune. And, uh, you know what, I've completely forgotten what it was we were talking about. Oh, really? Well, never mind. You listen to the music while you paint, and let's not say another word, eh? Um, that was the sweet soul surrender there, uh, by two oh. I recognise that voice. Who's, who's that disc jockey? I think it's Tony Blackburn. Tony Blackburn. Oh. Blackburn, 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 like Inky the octopus that come lolloping long. Mr. Pinky hits his hammer. Hit, hit, hit. Yes, hello. Is Mr. Richardson there, please? Yes, it's Tony Kennett from the bank. Hit, hit, hit. How far in the trunk, Mummy? How far in the trunk? Glenda knows. Glenda knows. Now, Johnny, equestrian cement. Equestrian cement. Andra. Johnny, I think it's time we went home. Great big face. Yes, Johnny. Come on. You're in my telescope. And if you've just joined us, well, it's not the scoreline after 45 minutes the Mancini would have wanted. Man City nil, Spurs 2. Ron, what do City have to do to get back into this game? City been rubbish. Bloody multi-millionaires, prima donnas, pansies, rubbish. I can't help but agree with you, Sam, because at the moment, Sheikh Mansour's billions count for nothing. His dosh is about as worthless as Monopoly money. Or the Deutschmark in the dying days of the Weimar Republic when hyperinflation meant people were taking wheelbarrows full of cash down the road to buy a loaf of bread. What would you have told the players, Ron, to do at half-time? Well, mainly, I'd have said to Manchester City, I'd have said, come on, you're Manchester City, aren't you? You know, play for the team, play football the Manchester City way, isn't it? Put the old round leathery thing in the back of the old onion bag. Exactly, Ron. It's not rocket science, is it? They were rubbish. No, it's not rocket science, Sam. It's football, isn't it? Association football, soccer, mm, the beautiful game, the working man's game, wasn't it? Legacy of the Industrial Revolution. Small boys in the park, short back and sides... Polio calipers for goalposts, isn't it? Indeed, you're on the working man's ballet, but if I could bring you back to the present, City have lined up and there appears to be no sign of Tottenham. They can't all be in the toilet. <laughs> have they been abducted by aliens? <laughs> or prostitutes, isn't it? Oldest profession in the world, hmm, wasn't it? I've never paid for it in my life. I'm just giving some news through that Man City have, in fact, bought the entire Spurs squad at half-time. Well, this is football for you these days. Rubbish. I absolutely love tweeting. 
you know, I follow loads of people's tweets. You know, people off the moment, like Gokwan, Stavros Flatley, Stephen Hawkins. But I've actually just tweeted myself. I've just tweeted, I've had my tea, which is a lie because I haven't actually had anything yet. But you've got to make your tweets sound exciting. Oh, Philip Schofield's just tweeted. I have just finished off Gino De Campo's leftover meatballs. Oh, you see, Twitter keeps you right up to date, you know, with current affairs. Like, before Twitter, who would have known about that? Except, you know, Philip and Gino. And now, it's worldwide. <laughs> oh. Equestrian cement. Hell, oh, yeah. You run, lady. I have received a letter from the Archbishop, John. Grave news, my lady. I don't know who to turn to. This is not a matter I could ever discuss with the family, and yet it is of a very personal nature. You know you can always trust me, Lady Margaret. I know, John. You have always been my rock. I saw the Archbishop last week, and he has written to me, commenting on... Oh, John. I don't know how to say it. Milady, I... Does my bum look big in this dress? Milady, I... He implies as much in his letter. Milady, you must be mistaken. The Archbishop would never be so bold as to comment on the size of your bum in a letter. Read it, John. Read it. Last Tuesday in the village and I noticed that your bum looked rather big in that dress. Well... I really don't know what to say. You are avoiding the issue, John. Does my bum, or does it not, look big in this dress? I feel that as a man, I don't think it's my place to comment on it. Ah, Lucy, does a lady's bum look big in that dress? Oh, it's not really my place to say, ma'am, you, you ladyship. What's going on in here? Give mother some air. Can't you see that she's tired? And mama, what on earth are you doing wearing that dress? It makes your bum look enormous. 